Hello, and welcome to The Big Q. I'm Tony Lopresti of the Religious and Theological Studies Department, a place where we ask the big questions all the time. With me today is the president of Salve Regina University, Sister Jane Garrity, who is just back from a trip to Washington, D.C. to hear the Pope address a historic joint session of Congress. Sister Jane, you're a sister of mercy. You travel to Washington to hear the Pope who preaches mercy on the feast of Our Lady of Mercy, no less. It had to be one of the more memorable days of your life. It absolutely was. You know, some things only happen once, and I knew this was only going to happen once. Um, so when Senator Whitehouse told me that he was going to give me his one ticket, I, I literally leapt for joy. It was at an, an event down here, and um, it was. Um, I was actually a little bit surprised at my how emotional I became when he walked into the um, into the Congress um, to this thunderous ovation that I think could have lasted ten minutes, except um, uh, Congressman Boehner banged the gavel and and put it to a close. But um, it was this almost a singular. I don't want to say lonely man, but he um, he was in his um, his white and stood out in that way and just walking down, appearing alone, um, and then when he began to speak, um, he captivated. Even though his English wasn't, um, wasn't perfect and he's been working on that, um, he, he totally captivated that, um, that Congress. Yeah, in one way it occurred to me he was a little bit out of his element, yeah, you know, in yeah. a room that he was not familiar with. Yeah. Yet once he got going, he really seemed to be at home with what he was presenting to people. Was there anything that he said that really left a lasting impression with you or that moved you in some way? Well, there were, there were a number of things that, that moved me. And I thought about uh, he wanted to speak to the Congress, the legislators, but he also wanted to speak to the American people. And he identified with us having come from our continent um, or coming from this side of the world as also um, a child of immigrant parents. Um, he identified in that way. And then I think he always inspires me as he talks about um, the dignity of each person and our responsibility, those of legislators, but those of the rest of us too, to respect that dignity, and in doing that, we create a unity. Um, I also, I counted the number of times he talked about dialogue in, um, um, in his speech, and in each instance, he wasn't giving a solution, but he was talking about this is the ideal, and in order to reach it, we need to have dialogue. It's interesting you mentioned that because I, I wanted to ask you about dialogue. He clearly framed his whole address in terms of a dialogue. Mm -hmm. He was not here to tell us what to do, right. but to be part of a conversation right. with us. So if you had had the opportunity afterwards to sit down and have an audience, a conversation with him, what might you have said to him? Well, I, one of the things I, I would have said to him is, Your Holiness, it's a really complex issue. I stand with you in terms of immigration and looking at what's going on in Europe, but also looking at what's going on in this, in this country. But where do you start? I mean, where do you where do you begin to solve this um, this really complex problem? Um, I think he did realize the complexity of everything that he was talking about. Um, the one thing that he was totally um, singular on, if you will, or clear about was the death penalty. Um, and that was a little bit surprising. I stand with him on that, but um, that he came out so strongly that, no, this is wrong. And he looked for a global ban on, on the death penalty. And of course, there's only a few countries left in the world. And that we're still, one of them. And, and, and we're one of them, I think, mm -hmm. with Iran and North Korea and, and China, mm -hmm. normally not the company that we, we want to keep. Um, so it will be interesting to see where that goes. The other thing I thought was very interesting was he used the stories of, of four Americans to speak to the American people. Abraham Lincoln, Martin Luther King, 
Dorothy Day and, and Thomas Merton. Um, and I'm sure you're familiar with all of them, but is there, is there any one of them that really resonates well with you, their story and what they mean for us? Well, certainly they all do. Um, and, um, but if I had to pick out two, can I have two? Okay. <laughs> if I had to pick out two, it would be Dorothy Day, um, somebody that I have just great admiration for and really would be in favor of her being made a saint. Um, hers was such a radical Christianity. And by radical, I mean going back to the roots of Christianity. Um, look at where Jesus was, always with the marginalized, always with the poor, always with those who, who needed healing. And Dorothy Day with her Catholic worker movement and the homes that she had lived that radically simple life. Um, so um, I very much resonate with her. And also uh, with Thomas Merton. That was a surprise to me, but it shouldn't have been, I think, because the Pope in a Jesuit, um, in the Jesuit tradition, I think is a true contemplative. I've read um, all of the interviews with him about what his daily life is like and how it begins with contemplative prayer in the morning and ends with an hour in the evening. How the man does it, I don't know. But um, um, so Thomas Merton as a contemplative, but who also engaged the world in terms of war, in terms of social justice. And then at the end of his life was very taken with um, Eastern spirituality. He was a man who was both rooted and open, um, and that's something I admire a great deal. Was there something in the address that you think the Salve Regina community should pay particular attention to? That, that something that the, an invitation to dialogue or, or an issue that the Pope highlighted that you think that we can make a difference on? Um, I think the thing that I would like the Salve community to listen hard to is this notion of openness to the other, um, to all people, even though, especially those who seem different from us. And so for the uh, Caucasian students to be open to the African American students, the straight students to be open to the gay students, um, I think that came across very strongly, the dignity of each person. And if we are open and we are um, in dialogue, that's what creates unity. And that's what I would like um, for Salve to, um, to be a really wonderful example of. And that's really part of the quality of the virtue of mercy. Absolutely. Right? To be open and, and welcoming yeah. and, and appreciative of everything people have to offer. And what he, what he said about polarization or fundamentalism, he was very strong about fundamentalism, that you get so locked into what your own religion, ideology, whatever it is, that you don't see the other. Um, and um, I really appreciated his being um, extremely critical of that. Well, thank you very much for sharing these reflections on the big Q. We really appreciate it, and I'm sure everyone who watches this episode will as well. So thank you for joining us uh, today, and we look forward to further episodes down the road of the big Q. And remember, the good life is not about living large, it's about asking the big questions.